Just a reminder, take these off before your dog goes out for a potty break. Been there, done that. Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and I have Quest with me today to talk about heat cycles. Um, I also have this adorable litter of puppies behind me. They are not Quest's puppies. They are the Hazel Shooter litter, and they're seven weeks old, and they're going to be going home this coming weekend. Uh, so they're still here hanging out and being adorable. Quest, on the other hand, started her day one of her heat yesterday, and I want to talk to you about what that process looks like from a breeding standpoint. Um, I keep track of and record all of my females' heat cycles, whether we're planning on breeding or not. So what that means is I record day one of their heat cycle on my calendar, so that I can look back and see because they should be cycling approximately every six months if everything is healthy and they're in good body condition um, and on proper nutrition. So all of our dogs eat the Yukonuba premium performance dog food as well as we keep them in really great condition, um, training in the off season, even some treadmill time, swimming, lots of things to keep them in good physical condition. But when we have a heat cycle, what we're looking for to indicate that we are in day one of heat is a little bit of reddish discharge. So a great way to do that, um, to tell for sure, is a very white paper towel. And then you're just going to do a little smear test, basically. Quest, stand up. Good girl. So I'll have her stand up. Good. And then I'll lift her tail and just wipe her vulva. I've got a little bit of pinkish colored discharge. You may not be able to see it from over there, but I'll definitely do a close up and we can show that. Um, but she's got a little bit of that pinkish colored discharge indicating that she is in day one. She's going to start bleeding heavier as her heat cycle progresses. Um, and one of the things, especially if you have a house dog, is it can be pretty messy. And I really like these heat panties, basically, these little doggy panties. Um, there's a little place for their tail. They Velcro on. They've got a super absorbent area right here. You can even add to that by putting in a panty liner or something like that, but they're easy to put on, easy to wash, and you can have a couple of these on hand when your female's going through their heat cycle so that they can still be in part of the family, do all the things, but not making quite as much mess. Just a reminder, take these off before your dog goes out for a potty break. Been there, done that. So going back to the record keeping that we do when we're planning on breeding a dog. So I've got my day one recorded on these really handy dandy breeding info sheets that I've created. So I've got the dog quest and the male that we're planning on breeding her to. I keep track of day one of her heat cycle, first day of blood, and then I will keep track of progesterone levels that we pull her blood, spin it down, send off serum to a lab, and then we get those results back. And those results were going to tell me when her progesterone levels rise, which will then indicate when her ovulation wave is going to happen. Um, every lab has slightly different scales. All of their machines are calibrated slightly differently. So find a lab, a vet that you can work with consistently so you can get consistent results so that you make sure you know what you're looking at. But then I'll be able to record the days of her progesterone level pulls and what those results were and then that information will allow me to plan my breeding dates. I know a lot of people have always said oh we just breed on day 7 to 10 and they're covered and we always are successful. Well that's great, that's good for you that that has worked out but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, male semen for live coverage can last for five to seven days inside a female's um, reproductive tract. So that gives you a really good chance of hitting some level of fertility during that point um, of the ovulation. If you're just guessing from day seven to 10 that you're gonna have coverage, uh, because Quest has typically been bred and has quality size litters when she's been bred at basically day 12 to 15. However, not every dog's heat cycles are the same, just like females, we don't always cycle the same. And so I've had dogs in the past that don't get bred till day 21 or day 30, and they have completely healthy quality size litters as well. But that was because we knew when they were ovulating based on the progesterone levels that we ran. So I can also look back, which is really cool when you do all this record keeping, to Quest's previous breeding pages, because I keep all of that information, and I can look back, um, this will be her fourth litter, but I can look back and see when her 
day one of bleeding was, as well as what the dates were that we did progesterone levels, what those results were, and then when we actually did the breeding and what days we did that, and then my expected whelp dates, which uh, our dogs are typically um, pregnant for 60 to 63 days. Um, that can vary slightly based on breed, but it's usually in that 60 day window give or take a few days and then you can go and calculate when she should have her ultrasound done after day 28 of being bred when you can do an x-ray to get a pretty quality puppy count um, which is 55 days that's when their skeletons have calcified enough to be able to see them on an x-ray and then my expected whelp date which uh, they can go a little before that or a little after that but i've got all that information here for every litter that we've done with her and she's very consistent if i look um, tie on day 13 that I calculated my expected whelp date off. I've got a tie when we did the Quest Thunder breeding on day 15 that I calculated my expected whelp date off of based on a progesterone of 15.6 and then also a tie on day 12 when we did her last litter to Vex um, and her progesterone levels were 7.3. Those progesterone levels rise really quickly um, and you look for your initial rise so when she's basically at a baseline of less than one is not considered a rise and then when she has that initial rise of let's say a 1.9 on day 10 then I'm able to look and say, okay, let's do another uh, progesterone in a day or two to make sure she's still continuing to rise and not stalling out, and we can start that breeding process, especially with live coverage because we know how long that semen can last within their reproductive tract. If you're doing a side-by-side, -side, a fresh chilled, or a frozen artificial insemination, you're going to want to work really closely with your vet to know when those breedings should happen and take place. So keeping track of all that information is just a really great resource, not only for future breedings, but to look back at and know, hey, we had a really quality size litter. Uh, these were her progesterone levels. This is when we did our breedings. Maybe um, we should follow that pattern to get another really successful litter. Other things that I wanted to mention and keep in mind is I talked about their expected whelp date, and that's really important information to have. Right, Quest? We need to know when you're ready to have your puppies. So having that information to know when we can expect to have puppies is really important so that we can start making sure that we've got a whelping space set up for her that she's comfortable in. We can start checking her temperature because we expect a temperature drop prior to her whelping, usually 24 hours before she starts labor. We also look for other signs of early labor, nesting, lack of appetite, some additional discharge, some panting, things like that. But we have a window to be looking for those signs and symptoms based on our breeding information. So we are just in the beginning stages of planning quests of breeding this time around, and we will keep you posted on that progress throughout her breeding as well as her litter. Thanks for watching. I'm Cat the Dog Trainer.